So what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the farm vlog here at Hidden Heights Farm. Uh, I'm out here with the Kiko Pygmy Goats. And uh, if you guys seen the title of this video, it is not clickbait. Uh, we had something pretty tragic happen yesterday over here in this pen. So um, I'll just cut to the chase. Uh, we ended up losing one of our goats yesterday. Uh, if you guys remember Ghostface, our solid black goat with the white uh, face. Well, it wasn't her, but it was her mom. She was a black goat and she had a white stripe down the side of her and uh anyways what happened is she got hung up in the fence she was stuck her head through the fence and she was leaning out eating the weeds over here on the side and um over the pasture and i kept hearing daisy going crazy and mojo going crazy and i look outside and uh i see a couple of the uh neighbor's dogs from down the road just chewing on her just ripping her face and ripping her throat and stuff like that um, I don't think I'm going to show any pictures. Rachel got a lot of pictures of her. Uh, I, w I tried everything I could to get the dogs to uh, leave her alone and they just kept kept on. One of them actually left. There was two dogs and they were pretty good sized dogs but uh, got a vicious goat right here. Uh, anyways, um, one of them wouldn't stop so I had to do what I had to do. I'm not going to go into detail about that. I was able to get the goat free and uh, she had a hole right here in her throat. I could stick my whole fist in. She had a bunch of arteries that was hanging out and uh, we didn't know this until uh, Rachel got her to the vet. And uh, the vet got her sewn up, got all the big parts of skin and all that that was missing. He got her sewed up somehow and uh, she was bleeding so bad. Rachel uh, put some gauze and stuff like that on her, wrapped her up real good. We got her in the truck and Rachel head to town took her to the vet but the vet got her sewed up got all the big holes fixed and then he noticed that uh air was coming under the skin and what happened is i guess the dogs had ripped a hole in uh, the goat's trachea so he uh ended up just putting her to sleep because he didn't think it was going to be uh feasible to try to save her and uh, she wasn't doing very well anyway with the amount of blood loss and everything else so uh, that is the news. Uh, I don't think I'm going to share any of those pictures with you guys. They're too graphic. Um, it's a bad deal. And uh, I'm going to walk over and I'm going to show you guys why it is important to use the better type of fencing that is actually for sheep and goat. Uh, this could have all been avoided if I would have had the better 4x4 square fencing over here in this field as well. Um, that's something that we're going to be investing in. I've already bought two rolls and uh we're gonna start trying to replace our fencing here uh one by one you know it's a lot of work to go back and take down your old fencing and put up all new but it's something we're gonna have to do to keep these goats from sticking their heads through the fence and uh it could have uh could have probably avoided this whole problem if we would have just done the fencing from the get-go uh when we first started we had cows and we had sheep and uh, the cows and the sheep never actually stick their heads through the fence, so it wasn't ever a problem. But when you get these goats with the horns, they stick their head through because the grass is always greener on the other side. And then they get their head stuck, and then if there's coyotes or dogs or anything on the other side, they will do what they did, start biting their face and all that stuff. And uh, Mojo and Daisy was doing their job. They were trying to get out to protect the goats, but they could not get out of the fence on that side to get out and to uh, attack the dogs or run the other dogs off. Um, but they were alerting us. As soon as they started barking, uh, I ran out here and I seen it. And that's, you know, that's that's the only thing that these dogs could have done because they couldn't get out where this happened. They couldn't get out over the fence to go chase them dogs off and protect them. Uh, Mojo was at the gate and Daisy was right next to him in her pasture. Mojo was trying to get through the gate and he couldn't. But uh, the way they were barking, I knew something was wrong. But I'll take a walk over here and I'll show you guys the fence. That is a big no-no. Uh, we get tons of questions coming all the time. What types of fence to use? What are the best things to do if we're thinking about getting goats? What do we need to have ready for goats? And, uh, you know, I'll use this circumstance as an educational video to uh, kind of show you guys why I tell everybody to make sure before you get any type of goats or anything like that to make sure you got the good infrastructure which would be fencing uh, you know the field wire is a lot cheaper but in the long run it's better just to spend the money and do it right the first time all right guys so i'm over here this is where the goat actually stuck her head through um i know you guys can't probably see this but there's still some hair and uh blood on the fence and a lot of blood and stuff on the ground this whole area was just bloody yesterday 
And uh, this is the regular field wire, and this is the perfect size for a goat to stick their head through. And if they got horns, it's really hard for them to pull their horns back out. So you do not want to use this type of fence if you know you're going to use use it to try to keep your goats in. So uh, what we'll be doing is we're going to try to replace this. We got these wood posts in here. These things have been here for like 15 years. They're still good. What I'll do is I'll run the new 4x4 fence on the inside here and tie it to my corner post. And then once I get that done, I'll go back on the outside and take this old fence down. But this is something we're going to have to do to try to keep our goats from getting their heads stuck. Um, if you guys have been following us for a while, you know last year during the summertime I had to do checks every day because some of those younger Spanish goats kept getting their head in the fence. And in the hot summertime when it's 90 degrees plus, you uh, leave a goat in the fence for a day or so, they're going to get dehydrated and they're going to die. So I can't stress enough how important it is to spend the money up front do the better fencing do the 4x4 wire <clears throat> uh, most of it's 48 inches tall so that's good too and spend the money up front do the 4x4 wire and you're good to go the goats can't get their head in there we've never even had little goats to get their head in there so <clears throat> excuse me my allergies have been uh kicking my butt for the last three or four days i've had a headache for like three days straight been eating a lot of honey been taking all my allergy medicine and it's not cutting it but anyways we'll walk over here and i'll show you the better type of fencing and uh i have that around our hog pen as well so we'll go ahead and knock out two birds with one stone we'll go feed the hogs look at the hogs get them on video see how they're doing and then talk about that fence the pigs always know when it's dinner time they hear me start the ranger up they come to the gate every time what are you girls doing huh you guys starving <coughs> all right so uh let me get these girls fed and we'll talk about this fence <coughs> So we still haven't named any of our pigs yet, but this little Barra here, man, he is growing good. I really like this breed of hog. I think I think they're gonna work out great for meat, and uh, hopefully they're good mamas. I still don't have their uh, feed trough done yet. I'm in the process of getting that done and getting their water made. I'm almost done with that. But what they like to do is they like to come out here and uh, dump their food over and eat it off the ground like this, don't you? Huh? Good girl. You guys just trade bowls back and forth. Look, they'll trade. It's so funny. They hear one rattle the bowl around, they'll go over there, and then the other one will go back over here. Just making uh, the rounds, I guess. All right guys, so let's talk about this fence. Uh, the reason for this whole video, I'm gonna walk over here to this fence and show you guys. So this is the good four by four sheep and goat fence. This is made by Red Brand. There's a couple of brands on the market. This is my favorite brand. I've used two or three different ones. And the way that they do their knots right here on this, let's see if I can show you. 
these just seem to be a lot better I really like this brand of fence so uh, that's the one we're gonna stay with for now this is not cheap by no means for a 330 foot roll I believe it's uh, right now it's like 250 249 269 something like that so it's not cheap but this stuff is uh, a lot stouter and the best thing about it is see I can barely fit my hand through there a little goat uh, especially a big goat is not gonna get their head through there it would be hard for very many varmints like coons and stuff to go in there I know they can climb right over but stray dogs stuff like that they would have a hard time getting through these holes in here and uh, just like over here we got the field fence and you guys can see the difference look at the look at this I can fit probably two of my two or three of my hands in there compared to this stuff so that's the difference and uh, that is why I tell you guys that ask hey what kind of fencing do you guys use well don't do what we did when we started off we started off cheap we didn't buy the good stuff the first time around and now we're paying for it so if you guys are going to build fence to get goats or sheep or any kind of animal i recommend going with the four x four stuff that it is so much better you don't have to worry about doing checks every day for your goats getting their head stuck and uh you don't have to worry about varmints predators all that sticking their head through and uh getting your livestock <coughs> So unfortunately, uh, it's the consequences we have to pay because we have this fencing pretty much around our whole place. And uh, our Spanish and Kiko goats are, they haven't been bad this year, but last summer when they were a little bit smaller, they were getting their heads stuck in it almost daily there for a while. If you guys remember, I put the pool noodles on a couple of their heads and I also put the PVC pipe over one of their heads as well on their horns and electrical taped it and uh that that kept them from pushing through but you don't want to have to do that i'm telling you guys how important it is just to do the good fencing up front and not have to worry about it i know that the field fencing is a uh it's probably what it's almost about a third of the price of the four by four wire but i promise you you guys will feel so much better just doing the good stuff up front i can't express enough how important that is um it actually it seems like as well it also stretches easier and it holds its uh tightness a lot easier this field wire seems like it uh maybe it gets loose over time and this stuff here we've 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 got some down here on our hillside uh if you guys have been following this last year i think it was about february march time i started uh fencing in our whole hillside down there and where we live it's way down below our house down a ravine and we can't see it from our house so we didn't want to take any chances of having goats get stuck or a coyote being down there and us not seeing it or whatever so we went ahead and spent the money and um got that done and uh we're really grateful we got we did it from the get-go on that part because that was uh really hard to fence and i sure don't want to do that over again so with that being said save your guys save yourself a headache do it right the first time don't want to have to do what i'm fixing to have to do and go back and take down the old fence and uh buy this new fence which it's really expensive spend that extra money and put it all up uh it's something i gotta do because we can't afford to be losing our goats you guys know how much these goats cost and uh, the one we lost was actually one of our better goats over on the pygmy kiko side she was already a half kiko half pygmy and uh it was unfortunate and uh this year she had triplets for us we already sold both of her sons about a week ago someone came and got them and then uh actually the same day that she died uh rachel's cousin his uh, little daughter was having a birthday party and they wanted to uh they wanted to buy one for her and uh they they came and got her yesterday so it was it was a really weird deal because she was having a stressful day she sat there and uh, seen her mom get pretty much shred to pieces. And uh, then she all of a sudden didn't have a mom no more. Well, luckily she's at a loving home with some other goats. They've got a couple of our other goats. They actually bought one of, uh, they bought the little Kiko buck over here that looks like Jerkface Jr. and Jerkface kind of. So she's over there with them. She'll be living a good life. And uh, hopefully she don't have to uh, remember what happened to her mom anymore. But Guys, I'm not going to make this video any longer. I just wanted to share with you the importances of having a uh, good fence for your livestock. 
don't cut it cheap don't cut no corners do it right spend the money up front do it right and have no regrets so guys if you're uh, not subscribed to the channel please hit that subscribe button leave a comment down below and we'll see you next time